Welcome back to the Pat McAfee Show here on this glorious Tuesday. Aaron Rodgers Tuesday. Nice November 23rd, 2021. Aaron's not the only superstar quarterback joining us. Whoa. Whoa. That's right, right now, live in Los Angeles, the Chargers superstar quarterback, a man that's six foot nine, 300 pounds, throws the ball all over the yard out of a tiny town in Oregon. Ladies and gentlemen, Justin Herbert. Yeah. I appreciate the intro, but I, I think that might have been too much for me, though. No, no, no. You deserve more. You deserve more. I Actually, take him off the screen. Take him off the <laughs> screen, please. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> joining us now, a quarterback that is changing the game with a rookie head coach, had a little bit of an ebb and a flow, and back on top after a Sunday night football victory that showcased not only that this man can throw, can run, but his hair is back to being yeah. glorious as well. Ladies and gentlemen, Justin Herbert! It's an honor to be here. Anything about the intro? It was awesome. I loved it. <laughs> okay. The honor's all ours. How you doing, man? Big win. You looked fantastic. There was a little bit of a time where I think the national narrative, I don't know about Chargers media, the national narrative was, how does the rookie head coach, how does the young quarterback, how do they get out of this entire thing? It feels like Sunday you guys found your rhythm again. What was it, and what do you think's happening with your team? Yeah, that one got awfully close. Um, you know, I, I thought it was good for us to kind of bounce back and, and deal with some adversity because, you know, we had uh, quite the lead and um, kind of found a way to, to give it up. But uh, we, we battled back and the defense came up with some big stops. So uh, just got to keep building off of that. I feel like last year we saw you answer a lot. And I think that is why so many people got so excited, not just about the Chargers team in the future, but about Justin Herbert. And I know you don't like speaking about yourself, and uh, that's honorable and admirable, especially in the world that we're in. He's in L.A. too. You're in that. I mean, it is. You are an anomaly, sir. But I feel like you do have that thing in you where you answer. Like, always, nothing, there's never a moment that's too big. It feels like you relish those moments when you have to make a big play, whether it's a throw to Mike or a run or another ball down the seam. Have you always been that way? Do you think it's it's just kind of your football mannerism? Is there have you ever is it other sports that kind of created that? Why do you think you are that way? Well, I appreciate that. I, I think it kind of starts with all our preparation, uh, spending the time with our, our quarterbacks coach Shane Day, Joe Lombardi, um, and all the quarterbacks in our room. We, we've worked on our, our our drops, our our footwork, everything for so long, and so that when you get put in that situation, you know you better have an answer for it. And um, you know we've we've made our fair share of mistakes and, and interceptions, incompletions, and you have to learn from those. And football is an awfully tough game, and as long as you keep making mistakes and learning from them. Um, I, I think you'll like where you end up. Austin Eckler had like four touchdowns or oh, something yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. And when he joined, he, hey, is he, is he, when you and him are, not, he is, he is. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's tall. He's, he's a pretty tall guy. Well, wow. it doesn't matter. I don't know if it matters. He has like 0% body fat. He's incredibly explosive. We love chatting with him because he's entertaining and everything like that. But when we talked to him, he talked about Brandon Staley in the team explaining why, the whys of why everything. Like, hey, this is what we're doing on offense to the entire team. This is what we're doing on defense to the entire team. This is what we're doing on special teams. Is that something you've enjoyed as well that kind of Coach Staley has brought in? And what other things do you think – have really made you guys a better squad this year? It's one of my favorite meetings of the week. Uh, on Thursday, we talk about the game plan to success, and we talk about special teams, offense, defense, and we go over that, and you kind of learn more about what the defense is doing and special teams is doing. And uh, it, it's, I think it's really cool to go out there on Sunday and especially see that happen in the game plan. And they talk about plays. They talk about you know how they're going to rush the passer, all this, all this stuff that they talk about, and you get to see it happen live. And, and I think that's the part that's really cool for us. What do you do off the field right now? Anything? Are you just studying film all the time? Is are the bright lights of LA getting in the way at all, or what, what's going on? No, I've kind of stayed out of that. Uh, just focusing on film, lifting, rehab, working, working out, doing all those things to to get right, so you have any chance to play on Sunday. You're an absolute animal, and uh, we found that out what his first drive. Yeah, oh, yeah. Got, and we don't have to take the visit back, but obviously, golf tee, tie rods long, <laughs> Herbert's in first drive, run somebody over. Mm, yeah. Whole team loves. Here we go. We are in the Herbert era now. Uh, what do you weigh? What height, weight, and what workouts? Do you just do sustainable workouts, or are you trying to get stronger as you go? Uh, I'm about 240 right now. Come on. 
just trying to maintain weight. Um, you know, football's a, it's a long season. 18 weeks is, is long. And, uh, you know, if, if I can maintain that weight for 18, 18 weeks, um, you know, I feel like I'm setting myself up for a shot. Do you do any training like uh, Rocky type training, you know? Not quite, but uh, I've looked into it, so I might have to start working on that. Well, because I thought, like, if you train just getting punched in the stomach, like, if it was to happen <laughs> oh. in a game, it's not that big of a deal. You know what I mean? Because Cam Hayward, future Hall of Famer, big guy, he brought that. Oh, ball. yeah. Uh -huh. Hey, did you even feel that? Did you eat that? What was that? And did you talk to him since the game? Have you chatted with him? No, I, I think it was a mistake. You know, I, I think... I think he slipped. I, I don't think anything was intentional. And, you know, football's an awfully emotional game. And, um, you know, sometimes you get caught up in the pile. And uh, I've got no hard feelings to him. And, you know, he's an incredible player. I've got so much respect for his game. So whatever happens, happens. And uh, it's on to the next play. And I assume he feels the exact same way about you. Are you are you chatty on the field? You're not really known as a chatty person. But I assume there's some defenders now at this point with 240 pounds. Jeez, Jeez. Jeez. So big. There has to be some people trying to get at least a little bit of a mental edge. Like, Hey, Herbert, have a good time today. Is there any interaction between you and defenders, or is uh, mostly quiet? Well, it's actually kind of been funny so far. Everyone's been really nice. Um, you know, it's one of those things I've actually really enjoyed talking to people on defense. And, um, you know, the longer you're in the league, the more you get to know people and you get to talk with them. And, you know, uh, they bounce from team to team. So just being able to talk with them and, and say, you know what, hey, how's it going? Good game and, and stuff like that. It's been really interesting. Did it feel like anybody, like, hated you, despised you? Did it feel like, have you been out there in the middle of it yet? I know this is still young in your NFL career, but has there been any moments where you're like, well, it feels like that person has hate in his heart towards me. Has there been any of that? Not yet, but uh, people have probably done a pretty good job of hiding it. So uh, I think that's something I have to <laughs> pay more attention to. Uh, when you go into play like a Denver or a team in a division that you know, is there any – I mean, you're still so young. I mean, you're still so young. But you carry yourself like a vet, and you've played your entire rookie year. We got a chance to watch just so many close games. When you're playing a divisional opponent, is there anything that helps, or is it you guys are in a new offensive scheme now, new defensive scheme? You kind of just got to look at it like each individual individual game is coming? Um, I think looking back and watching the games from last year, I think that can be super helpful. Um, but ultimately what it comes down to is you're going to have to have a good week of preparation. You're going to need to watch as much film as you can. And, um, you know, this Denver team, they've got a really good defense and, and they're playing some pretty good football. And uh, it's up to us to have a good week of preparation so that we have any chance on Sunday to win. Have you changed your routine at all? Are you be building your routine currently? Like you had your first off season. Did it, was, did it go exactly how you thought? Have you looked back on anything, how you would change and do your week to week change as you're trying to find your forever routine? routine here as an NFL quarterback? Yeah, I think uh, one of our best additions would be Chase Daniel. Uh, you know, he's one of those guys, a, a veteran quarterback that has been around the league so long, has, has had so much success that, uh, you know, he's kind of led us through our, our film routine. And it starts um, today on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and going through it and having a plan of watching uh, certain aspects of the game. And I think he's been super helpful. Today's Tuesday, Herbert. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know it's Tuesday. I just meant at the start of the week. I was a little bit worried. Are you guys playing Monday night? Are you playing Monday night or Sunday? Sunday, I believe. <laughs> oh, this <laughs> wow. This guy. You know, Thanksgiving. Yeah, 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 Thanksgiving's Thursday, by the way. Uh, happy Thanksgiving to you and your family, Herbert. Yeah, yeah. Hope you enjoy that. Are you going to kick any field goals this year? Because I saw you, obviously, training camp fucking smoke one. That was a good ball. Uh, no, I'm not allowed to do that anymore. Uh <laughs> Hamstring, just, hamstring. Just got to stick to throwing the ball. Did they say hammy? No more hammy blow? I mean, potentially. Yeah, just take it easy over there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is amazing. Go ahead, Ty. Justin, on Twitter and stuff like that, people always talk about, like, the battle for L.A. or whatever and, you know, how, like, sometimes the Chargers games, it seems like it's 50-50 and then you got the Rams who are bringing in all these guys. Do you guys at this point feel like, uh, does SoFi actually feel like your home stadium? Like, do you have, do you feel like you have home field advantage there? I love playing at SoFi. You know, the Chargers fans, they always show up, and they, they've done an incredible job of uh, showing their support, and their support means the world to us. And, you know, it's always tough because uh, opposing teams, they do travel well. It's the NFL. It's always going to be tough, but uh, SoFi is definitely our home. That place looks like a space station, huh? Is that what it's like behind the scenes, like the <laughs> locker room? It looks so – is it so much nicer than all the other stadiums you go to, I assume? It's really impressive. We, we're so lucky to be able to play there. It's The, the facilities are second to none, and, um, you know, it's, it's an awesome field. Hey, when you – 
and they say this about NFL quarterbacking, but you did it last year and you're continuing to do it. When you throw to a spot, is that just a feel thing? And does it change, obviously? Like Keenan's a stud, Mike's a stud, you have a lot of weapons. But when you're thrown to a spot where it's only your guy, there's no thinking that's just like kind of naturally happening, happening to you? And have you always been that type of quarterback, like even in college? I think it has to be that way. I, I don't think you can think and throw at the same time. And I, I think the more you think, the the worst the throw is probably going to be. And I think that's just one of those things that you have to kind of learn through and go through with, with experience. And I think it's much like kicking too. And you, if you think, you're probably um, – making some trouble for yourself yeah uh paralysis by analysis i was too dumb to ever think which is good news for me <laughs> so i think you're way too smart hope you'll get through that have you adjusted anything with your body for the long season uh like if via college into the nfl with your technique for instance we talked to josh allen he put lasers on his body or some sort of uh, some sort of device like yep. a golf swing and he found out that although he had a strong arm his elbow was in front of his hip that's why he wasn't as accurate have you do you work on all those little finer details still are you still evolving or are you pretty set with your motion no i haven't worked on anything like quite like that um i, I think that's maybe something to address in the, the next off season uh, but i think a lot of the footwork stuff a lot of the drop mechanics that we worked on this past off season i think that's been super helpful this year oh you can feel it exactly just more comfortable in the drop? Like you're not hitching as much? How can you feel it? It just it just is coming a lot easier and quicker to you? Is the game slowing down because of it? Yeah, I think it's it, it kind of starts with setting up the pocket and not getting too deep and, and being able to step up and uh, kind of have a sense for where the pocket's going to be. And if there are free rushers, you know, you have to take, take uh, quick little steps to kind of avoid those guys. So um, it's definitely challenging, but uh, have gotten a lot better at it. Well, wow, you're crushing it, dude. Go ahead, Tom. Justin, like in reference to that and pocket awareness and stuff like that, there was many, many times on Sunday where you would step up. It's a diehard Steelers fan you're talking to yeah, right here, by the great way. Great game Sunday. Uh, where you'd step up and there was literally no one in front of you. And that happened like 10 times. Do you, like when that happens, do you still try to sit there and make a throw or you're like, I'll take this 20 yards easily? I think that's kind of the challenge that you have to face when you're playing quarterback. And, um, you know, it's obviously great to go through your reads and find a, a guy downfield and make a completion. But at the same time, if it's third down and, and you need to be able to go get five or six yards, uh, going and scrambling and, and finding a lane to run, I think that's huge for our offense. Hey, you run, this guy runs a 4-6. That's right. right. This guy runs a 4-6. That's what the internet was saying. The, the entire internet was like, Justin Herbert, surprisingly yeah, quick. Pretty mm -hmm. fast. Pretty crafty athlete. <laughs> First one in, last one out. Yeah. Son of a football coach. Whoa. You still running four six, or is that just combine time? You're not working on that anymore. Um, you're always working on your speed. Uh, Coach Lamondo and Jonathan Brooks at uh, the strength staff here—they've done an incredible job. So <laughs> we're we're always working on it. Hey, you were rolling there. Now a three hundred pounder did catch you. Yeah, and then he punched you. But you were, <laughs> you were rolling there. I mean, just something to think about. I guess I'm not working on my speed uh, quite enough then. Hey, well, don't. Hey, listen, don't be kicking balls and let's not be doing too many explosive things, okay? Let's not blow any <laughs> hammers. Let's throw the fucking ball, Justin. Go ahead, Connor. Yeah, Justin, the hair looks phenomenal. Is there any thought to maybe pivot to a mullet at some point or are you just going to let it keep going? And then, real quick, talking turkey, are you a mashed potatoes guy <laughs> or what? Uh, for sure, a mashed potatoes guy. Uh, but Come on! No, yes! no thought on the mullet quite yet. Um, I think that's something that I uh, kind of think more about and. Uh, maybe transition to in the off season. Oh, uh, maybe playoff run. Ooh. No. What do you say? Playoff mullet. <laughs> Come on. Last, guys time, going. Last, last time you were on, you said, I'm a Nike guy, and you hadn't signed a Nike deal. And I said, whoa, 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 you'll fucking sign with Adidas, right? Let's make sure we have a little leverage. You're like, no, I'm a Nike guy. You're a Nike guy now completely? Yeah, Nike guy. Uh, I've always been loyal to the, to the swoosh and uh, kind of grew up with it. So uh, it, everything worked out well. Hey, congrats. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Really, really happy for you, man. Go ahead, Frank. Justin, uh, back to the running that we were talking about with you doing, and especially on Sunday, I noticed you were sliding a lot, and a lot of young guys, when they come into the league, either refuse to slide or don't know how. Is that just, like, instinctive? Have you ever worked on that? Did you play baseball? Where'd that come from? Because it was, as a Steeler fan, it was frustrating to watch. Yeah, it's uh, it's super important not to take hits in the NFL because all those guys are on the side of the ball, uh, they're bigger, faster, and stronger than me. Um, and, and so growing I up, I don't think so. Yeah, Four six two forty. Yeah. I think I think you start maybe you know <laughs> run them over. Huh? You know they're, they're not bigger, stronger, faster than you. But I do like that you are thinking about the team because your availability is better for everybody's life. That's a real thing. Is that is that something that anybody's had to tell you, or did you know that? Well, uh, we talked about it last year 
the Chiefs game when I, I took the hit on the sideline, it, it took one hit for me to realize never to do that again. <laughs> and so <laughs> every opportunity that I get to slide and not avoid a hit, uh, I'm going I'm to slide. Stuffing, though, is your number one side, obviously, on Thanksgiving over mashed potatoes, probably? Uh, yeah, I'd put them both at the top. I don't think I could pick one over the other. Ooh, good man. You a white meat or drumstick guy? Huh? Uh, I'm more of a, a ham guy, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. 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 she so liked the drumstick then. Honey baked. Because the drumstick is the ham of the turkey. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? So, so I understand that. Um, do you have family coming into town? Is it just another work day? What is it? My brother, actually, my older brother who uh, goes to medical school at Columbia. So he's going to hang out with me for a week. So it'll be fun with him. So you you come from big brain family, too, mm. like big, big brain family. He's the smart one. You know, I've I've had to live up to him. What do you do other than football, though? Do you do you are you a video gamer? No cards player, just kind of live your life. What do you do? Uh, I try to play golf as much as I can outside of football. Nice. Um, but uh, other than that, during the season, we don't have too much time off. Justin, you're like, and it, not just saying this because you came on the show and you've come on the show before and given us incredible time, and we're very thankful. Hey, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, Justin. No, but you are like the picture perfect superstar if I wanted a young quarterback to be. You seem to be incredibly humble, smart. In LA, could be a distraction for everybody. Have you guys experienced that at all on your team? Like new players come in. Is there ever is that ever addressed or is it just kind of understood? Like we get to live in great weather. Let's not let all the other stuff fuck it up. Or is it you have a good locker room that's just kind of bought in? I think everyone's been really focused on on what we need to do here in the building. And I think that COVID has kind of affected that as well and kind of being safe and realizing that, you know, you can't do exactly what you wanted to do a couple of years ago. Everything's changed. And uh, for us to keep playing football and to, to, to be able to do what we want to do, we have to be safe. We have to be smart. Um, and so I, I think that aspect of things everyone's been really good at. You ever talk to Tom Telesco and does he say, thank God Miami drafted to him? <laughs> does he say that to you or how this, you can laugh. Yeah, you can go and pop it down. <laughs> how are the conversations with Tom Telesco? Tom is, is such a smart, such a smart person. You know, anytime you get to talk with him, you get to learn so much more about football, about player personnel. And, um, you know, we believe in him so much and he's done an incredible job so far. Well, you and I have it, it's certainly one thing. I'm 242. It looks a little different. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Tom Telesco brought me into the NFL as well with the Colts. He was the reason I got drafted to the Colts. Obviously, he's incredibly pumped that you were the quarterback for his franchise that he got to bring in. Uh, we can't thank you enough for joining us on this beautiful Monday, Herbert, on this beautiful Monday. And have a great week. <laughs> have a great Thanksgiving, and good luck this weekend against Denver, brother. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Always a pleasure. No problem. Ladies and gentlemen, Justin Herbert. Thank yeah! you. He's awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very good at football, too. Unfucking believable at football. Yeah. They say, and I didn't want to say it to him because I didn't want him, I didn't know. He would probably take it as a compliment. They say very Cam Newton ish. When he walks by, it's yeah. like, oh, this guy's a defensive end. Yeah. You know, you know, these guys are bigger, faster, stronger. Mm, I don't think so. I don't know for you. I understand there's probably other basic ass quarterbacks telling you that. But that is not the case for no. you, sir. You are an absolute stud. Nick, I loved your question because. All you were hoping for probably on Sunday is, hey, somebody get a little shot. <laughs> yeah, get somebody him. get a little yeah. shot on this guy, but he's going down. And that's what we've been saying about, like, Joey B and mm -hmm. Carson. And I think yeah. Aaron has even said, it, like, hey, these young quarterbacks, will just go down, yeah. go down. Him taking one hit and being like, well, I don't like the way that felt. <laughs> that's, oh. just, that's incredible evolution. And that's like being a pro, and that's like understanding the game a lot more. I'm incredibly pumped for him. Sorry, you guys. You know, lost on Sunday, obviously, Diggs, but you got to be impressed as hell. I, with that. I fucking love Justin Herbert. Like, yeah. I am so jealous of the Stunt, Chargers that yeah. they have him for the next however Stunt. many years. Humble. Yeah. Yeah. He's perfect. And that's where that small town where they thought he couldn't handle the glitz and glamour is actually the the gift of the gift curse situation where he is just like, hey, I'm enough. Like, I. I'm just here to work, get better, enjoy my team. And Staley is the coach speak. Yeah. So, I mean, that is, seems like a great yin and yang there. Uh, let's move on. Thank you, Justin Herbert. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, 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 yeah.